Darren in the mail rather than Steve in the car. Darren ready to get in now. We're getting ready for the stop. We're coming in next lap, John. We're coming in next lap, we are. It's a pissed off. Why did you take so long, Fred? No, you can... uh, Fred pushes us away, but I can tell you the reason that they haven't come in yet. He smiled at me a little while ago and said, we've got plenty of fuel left, why would you come in yet? <laughs> yeah, that'll be Fredo. One of the most cagey guys in the business. He took uh, Mark's game to two Bathurst victories and two Australian Touring Car Championships. A big fan of young talent. He's bringing this guy, both these guys, Stephen Ellery and Darren Hossack on. Tremendous start from Stephen Ellery. We saw him take third position with Tony Longhurst, a great double stint at Bathurst last year. And he's doing a great opening stint in this car as well. But we know they're due to pit pretty soon. Meanwhile, big charge there from the Holden Racing Team Commodore. Craig Lowndes, he's getting plenty of speed out of that car. He's the fastest man on the track now as the Wins Commodore comes in for its stop. Stephen Ellery will change over to Darren Hossack, the rookie, in his first enduro ride. Into the pits they come as we were watching uh, Ellery bring the Wins Commodore into the pits. Lowndes was coming right up on the back of Dick Johnson. So here we go. This is it. Gibson. Sorry, Leo's going to say, but he's going to see what tyres they're going to. What are they going for? Looks like they've got a, another groove tyre standing beside, ready to go on the car. So Fred's not convinced yet, and the driver's not convinced yet. The slicks are the way to go. With those big plies in there pushing back these six piston calipers. Slides in the new pads. Got the stopwatch on this, just coming up to 30 seconds. The slick stop was considered between 30 and 40 seconds. There's Stephen Ellery. Well, a big bust up for Tony Longhurst's team earlier in the year. He's been out in the wilderness for a while, managed to do the deal to get into this car. Looks like a good call too, running with the Fred Gibson Motorsport operation. 45 seconds. That is not a bad stop. Just under 45 seconds for a pad change, 120 litres of fuel, driver change and a tyre change. Well done. Fantastic stuff. They come out. A big moment for the young guy behind the wheel now, Darren Hossack. It's his very first Sandown 500, the Tickford 500 today. Murphy and Lowndes, they still lead the way. Hossack's just gone out, so he won't be in second anymore. Ingle, then we go to Jimmy Richards, Neil Croft, and we look six back through ten. Your order, there it is. Hope you're enjoying all the action here on your home of motorsport. We'll be back right after this. The Tickford 500 from Sandown. What an amazing race. And this is a great view of it from the Whitman's Lightship. Courtesy of Whitman's Chocolates. There it is. And spectacular stuff it has been. The final pit stop has been made of the first round of pit stops. And that was the Hossack car. And they've only lost six placings. They were unofficially first. They've dropped down to seventh after a 45-seconder. And that was about 15 seconds ahead of most of the other crews. Lowndes is now officially the race leader from Russell Ingle and Jimmy Richards makes up the top three. And Lowndes is about to put a lap on Darren Hossack. There he is, right behind the behind the wins Commodore. There it is, from first back to second. 42 seconds from Lowndes back to Russell Ingle. And here goes Craig Lowndes on the inside of Darren Hossack. He puts a lap down on the wins Commodore. So Lowndes is just going so well at the moment. Could it be back-to-back -back victories for Craig Lowndes and Greg Murphy? Well, certainly looking that way, the way they're charging along at the moment, they've got a very good setup on the car. It's very, very quick, no matter what sort of tyre combination they put on, and it's just producing the right sort of lap times. Lounge in the one minute, 21 second bracket. We saw Crompton go out on a complete slick. That means it was, didn't have any cuts in it at all. And uh, they're running at about the same sort of time too, but that's a Yokohama tyre on the Coke car and a Bridgestone on the uh, leading Lounge car. So a real tyre battle happening here only amongst the tyre technicians, but the team managers and drivers as well. Castrol Commodore number 11, Russell Ingle, sitting in second position. Keep in mind, it's been a terrific job by those guys. They qualified 11th, and they are now sitting in second position on lap 76. This is Russell Ingle. See Russell heading off the ideal line as well. It's getting quite dry on the, on the racing line now, so he was heading off to try and find any sort of puddles he can. Maybe the temperature's coming off on these tyres. They're starting to feel a bit bit gummy, starting to move around a little bit under the car. The trouble is with these tyres, 
if they're too soft for the conditions, the rubber compound gets so hot that it actually destabilizes and starts to disintegrate. And uh, it's very, very difficult to drive a car, almost impossible to drive a car under those conditions. Jim Richards behind the wheel now for Valvoline Cummins Commodore. Jim sits in third position, so things are going exceptionally well for the Gary Rogers Motorsport team. There's your Shell Helix race score. Combination of Murphy and Lowndes Gardner and Crompton. Crompton slipped back to fifth position, so whether he has had a little hiccup somewhere along the line, there he is, a couple of cars back from Jimmy Richards. Jason Bright sandwiched in the middle there. Jason is currently sitting fourth. Watch that gap too, because it looks like certainly they're closing the gap to the Valvoline Cummins Commodore. Steve Richards handing over to his father, Jim. There's Jimmy Richards. Jimmy's also turns 50 this year. A guy with enormous experience, multiple Australian touring car champion, multiple Australian Bathurst winner. A guy who's just about been there and done it all. And he's the right kind of guy to have in the car in these very difficult situations. If you're a Tony Longhurst supporter, as we see Neil Crompton charging up on the inside of Jason Bright in the Coke Commodore. This is the battle for fourth and fifth. Bright is on the outside. He's sitting in fourth. Look at Crompton. Very aggressive up the inside, and Crompton's got him. Now, keep in mind that Crompton, to our knowledge, is the only car running on slick tyres at the moment. Yeah, it was running, getting checks run up and down pit lane. From what we saw, Crompton, the Cape Wayne Gardner team, the only ones who have gone for the full slick at this stage. It's interesting looking at their lap times because they're pretty much equal to Craig Lowndes on a clear lap. But there's so much traffic around, it's very hard to monitor their relative performances. Well, he was able to work his way past Jason Bright there relatively easily. He now has Jim Richards inside. He's his next target. And look how far he's pulled away so quickly from Jason Bright and the Komatsu Ford. Yep, it's a real tyre battle out here. We hear from uh, our chopper pilot that there may be some rain heading this way within the next 10 to 15 minutes. We'll keep an eye on that for you. There's Wayne Gardner. Hey, watching how are you going? <laughs> watching on. As yeah, it was us. <laughs> very experienced teammate, Neil Crompton, just back from the United States. He's done very well in the United States. U.S. Touring Car Championship where he finished third and uh, really making a name for himself in the U.S. Back aboard a V8, thoroughly enjoying. I spoke to Crompton on uh, Friday and he said, boy, when you get back in these things, because the kick of 600 horsepower in your back, it's quite a different experience. Let's have a look at this, Mark. The Privateers, the Shell Helix race score for those guys. It's the combination of Hossack and Ellery leading the way. The Waldock-Smith combination next. Mike Conway, Gavin Monaghan and Terry Finnegan and Peter Fitzgerald sitting in fourth position. They're circulating very quick on the circuit, but they're back in fourth. They've had a few hiccups and a few spins, but they're going very, very well. That's the Al Commodore in front. We're on board at the moment with Wynn Percy in the better electrical Fisher and Piper entry. There's Wynn behind the wheel. He'll be back as well to compete in the Primus 1000 at Bathurst on October 19. Well, he really is the grand old man here. 55 years of age, Wynn, born and lives in the UK. Second in uh, the 1987 500 here with a Commodore with Alan Grice. And, uh, of course, Bathurst winner with Alan Grice. 1990, that fabulous win by Holden Racing Team against the Turbos. And he was third at Bathurst in 1985 for Tom Walkinshaw when they brought out the big XJS V12 Jaguars. Currently competing in the British GT Championship back home and thoroughly enjoying himself. And he said uh, to me in the pits on Friday, I just love getting back to Australia and driving these big V8 things. He really, really gets off on it. Well, he's got a busy time because he's not sticking around in Australia for very long. He heads back to the UK straight away. He's got to compete in the ninth round of that series. But then, as we said earlier, he will be back. Oh, he gets it all crossed up. <laughs> with Wynn Percy, lap 79 of this 161 lap race and as you can see on that windscreen there are spits of rain, windscreen wipers starting to work certainly on the Valvoline Cummins Commodore so our chopper pilot's call was correct and we could be able to see or may be able to see a lot more rain on the Sandown track in a very short period of time. Now that's not going to work for Crompton. Crompton's been able to get past Jim Richards, he's now up into the top three but if that rain continues to fall we're seeing now that the gamble to go on to slicks by the Coke team was the right one at the moment. If that rain continues to fall, that will work against them. Yeah, we'll watch that weather with interest. We're riding with Wynn Percy in the better electrical Commodore as he comes right up behind Mike Conway's EB Falcon, one of the many privateers running in the Tickford 500 today. Sneaks past up the inside. Lights of blaze coming up behind Terry Finnegan in the Alcare Commodore. 
So as we saw before on that race score, the battle amongst the privateers equally as intense as it is amongst the outright contenders. Mark, we were talking about it not so long ago. Terry Fittinger is doing a tremendous job in that Alcare Commodore. We normally see Terry run in the Sony Auto Sound Commodore. And he's teamed up with Peter Fitzgerald this weekend, and I'd imagine that it was a last-minute thing because Greg Crick was supposed to drive. He was scheduled to drive in the car with Peter Fitzgerald. He hasn't been able to uh, compete here today due to some uh, family reasons. And Finnegan has just uh, done a colossal job. We're looking on screen now. Mobile HRT car number 15. This is your lead car. Craig Lowndes has stepped in. He is behind the wheel, taken over from Greg Murphy. We watch the battle here between Wynn Percy. Well, Sorry, Lee, I was going to say, Holden Racing Team really have got the setup right at this moment in the race. Lounge is just on a 118.8. He's the first man into the 18s. Building on that lead, look at that, it was 40-something seconds before. Now it's out to 56, almost a minute lead over Perkins Ingle in the Castrol Commodore. No doubt Larry will be having his fingers crossed for a safety car period pretty soon. Well, that sounds pretty impressive that Lounge has done a 118. The closest driver to him is the Holden Young Lions entry of Jason Barguana. He's done a 119. Now those times may not mean anything to you around the sand down circuit but we'll give you comparisons to show you and to let you know who's quicker than each other so don't worry about necessarily the time around the circuit but listen to when we compare brock is in yeah it was a real tragedy a little problem with the throttle just approaching half distance in the tickford 500 and they're affecting the brake change on this car they wouldn't have done it first when they were trying to fix that throttle just wanted to get that car out on the track as soon as they could peter brock handing over to mark scape this will be a good test for them. You can guarantee Scaife will absolutely wring this thing's neck to find any other weaknesses in the car before they head to Mount Panorama. Well, yesterday during the top 10 shootout, we went on board with Mark Scaife when he, he was the last car to go out and qualify. And uh, he just manhandled the 05 Mobile Holden Commodore around the circuit. It was almost three tenths quicker than Mark Larkin. Scaife is on board. Oh, there goes Finnegan. And Lowndes obviously had to go around and dodge him. Look at the amount of dirt and muck being dragged onto that corner. You've got to be very careful, not only on entry, but you've got to be very careful on exit now too if you don't want to pick up all that dirt and garbage. So Finnegan, he's showing tremendous spurts of speed in between various dramas he's having out there. Very aggressive run from uh, the Sydney privateer. Well, he could have a life in Speedway after uh, road racing. <laughs> <laughs> out there a fair bit today but Terry take nothing away from him he's done a good job there's Craig Baird all the uh, tape over the number 18 Shell Helix Falcon he sits back out of the top 10 at the moment but trying to work his way into it the Shell Helix race score it's Lowndes who leads the way from Russell Engel Neil Crompton still sits in third spot ahead of Jason Bright and Jimmy Richards in the top five in six Faulkner and Percy in the Fisher and Pake Hill Commodore Hossack and Ellery Johnson and Bow in eighth position Longhurst in ninth Bart one are in tenth we go back 11th it is the combination of Johnson and Baird Baird behind the wheel then Parsons Trimble Waldock and Finnegan Getting back in the field, 16th, Conway and Monaghan in the Falcon. Price and Brewer, 17th, Williams Gober, 18th, Connor and Dulman, 19th, and Stenekin in 20th position. And windscreens O'Brien. And Alan Jones dominated the first part of this race. A very aggressive drive to take at one stage. A 13-second lead after pole sitter Peter Brock was forced into the pits with major problems. This is Larry Perkins, also aggressive, attacking Greg Murphy. There was a little contact there and also a little aggro as well, but they sorted it all out. No major drama when they returned to the pits. Glenn Seaton damages his spoiler. He was the first to head back to pit lane for a driver change and, of course, a tyre change. Parsons taking over there. Now we're in the pits with Murphy after that little collection with Perkins. And this was a major stop. Now we're looking at the Perkins car changing over to the drive for Russell Ingle while Murphy changed over to Craig Lowndes. Now, Alan Jones hands over to the youngster Jason Bright. They're making a brake pad change. It didn't go all that well. It was a fairly slow pit stop and this let them back in fifth place when Jason Bright rejoined the race. Dick Johnson's first stint on the track after he took over from John Bow, left him off in the mud, desperately trying 
trying to get back on. He made some sort of effort and was in fact stuck on the ripple strip for a while. This is Stephen Johnson who damaged his spoiler. Looking at another major off here, the young lion of Jason Barguana spinning on the first corner when he took over from Mark Noski. Crompton and Bright left the track as well in these very slippery conditions. They've recovered. Tight choice hurting Crompton right now though he's on slicks as rain threatens. Ellery led the race very late uh, then made a pit stop. He was the last one to come in. Took over rookie Darren Hossack and that left him in seventh place. But Craig Lowndes leads the race. This is the Whitman's light ship, which is giving us some marvellous pictures of sand down today and also letting us know that the rain that is hovering around the track today, like the light ship, is once again going to play a major part in this race. In particular, as I mentioned, for Neil Crompton, as far as we know, the only driver on slicks. But you're looking at race leader Craig Lowndes. Pictures from the Whitman light ship. He goes past Paul Gover, the Williams-Gover combination there. And, well, we're looking at possibly a defence of the Tickford 500 for the Lounge. Murphy combination. There's your Shell Helix race score. Engel still sits in second. Neil Crompton in the Coke Commodore doing a terrific job. The big mover in the pack has been Wynn Percy. Teamed up with John Faulkner in the Fisher Paykel Federal Electrical entry. Is now up into the top five. Jason Bright, teammate of Alan Jones. He's sitting in fifth. Yep, it's a really, really colourful field that 05 with Mark Scaife aboard himself into this car and he'll try and get some crucial data on the performance of it take that with them to mount panorama there's no chance of them winning the event now some nine laps behind so mark scaife talking to the crew testing out things like brakes transmission engine performance fuel economy all those things so critical to success at bathurst and use this as a very tough test session you can see that Definite, not totally dry, but uh, the word we used before, Mark, dry ink or drier, or I guess we could say now, line that's definitely around the Sandown International Circuit. Scaife dialed right in at the moment. Well, Lowndes times have stabilised around the 1 minute 20 second bracket. He's just operating when he gets a clear track in the low 1 minute 20 second. He's just on a 120.24, and everyone else behind him is operating in the 1 minute 21 or higher. So. The 15 car, the mobile Holden deal team, Holden Racing Team Commodore, I should say, is uh, absolutely tearing away with this race. Charlie O'Brien on board the Tony Longhurst Castrol Ford has done exceptionally well. Charlie's sitting in seventh position at the moment. He's very excited about getting behind the wheel of a V8 supercar again, and he's tucked in there behind Jim Richards, who currently holds down sixth position. There's Brock. Uh, rather, the Brock car, Scape on board, onto the back straight. Flat out, a very fast part of the circuit. They reach speeds of up around 250. Speaking of Charlie O'Brien, here he is in the 25 Castrol Ford. Yeah, it's great to see big Charlie back behind the wheel of the V8 supercar. Joined us for commentary earlier in the year. And uh, really, I think, entertaining the idea of setting up his own team next year. I'm not sure how fruitful that's going to be, but that's what he'd love to do, operating out of his own garage and on the Gold Coast. So I think this cross Charlie can join the V8 supercar ranks in 98. Well, he's been around a long time. This is, believe it or not, he gets a little bit sideways out of the top corner there. This is, this is his 17th sand down appearance, and he's going very well in 17th position. Barry Sheen, I believe you've got a special guest. Yes, I have. Peter, not the best of days so far. What an amazing sport this is, this, <laughs> this, this motor racing business. The uh, throttle cable came out of a little uh, holder in the inlet manifold, underneath all the air box and apparatus under the bonnet there, which is all airtight and made to, you know, give bulk horsepower. Took them ages to get it all off, of course. I, I don't know how many laps I lost, but I just had to sit there and think, well, today's not my day, but great start in front, looking good. But uh, I'm having a lot of fun out there, honestly. It's amazing with all these days of space-age technology and that and Mickey Mouse and everything like that happen. You know, nothing's really changed. I mean, every time that they, uh, you know, you think it's going to be some high-tech uh, gizmotron, it turns out to be that 20 cents sort of wash that they talk about, that mythical one. But no, it wasn't to be, but uh, I, I had an absolute ball out there. Uh, I guess I did. Uh, I had a couple, the engine cut out a couple of times here for some unknown reason. We've been chasing this problem the last couple of days, but it uh, really was, was good fun. And I, I had a ball out there the last few laps here. I really caught and passed up uh, a couple of good quick cars, you know. 
you look over your shoulder, oh, he's gone now. I was going to say uh, Scaifey was on it. I bet Scaifey's really wringing its neck. No, uh, Scaifey will be giving it absolutely heaps because I, at this point, I guess you, you're saying, well, uh, let's get to the uh, Primus 1000 about Thursday. October the 19th, and uh, let's get it, let's find out what we can about this car today. Uh, we changed tyres, and we put a set of intermediates on his car, the same as Craig's got on, and currently we've got the two quickest cars on the track. And it, look, if we if it does happen like this at Bathurst, we've done a terrific amount of homework, I can tell you. All right, well, best of luck anyway. And are you going? Are you going out? Again? I'm not sure. Look, I honestly think that. Uh, 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 that uh, Skater could get to the finish, but for all time's sake, I did promise everyone I'd do it an almighty wheel at the end of the race, so maybe we'll hop in for the last couple of laps, but it depends on how we pan out. I mean, we're a mile behind, but, you know, press on. Thanks a lot, Pete. Thank you. Have you ever seen the man not happy? Well, to smile in a situation like that, well, he's just got a great outlook on life, hasn't he? Yeah, well, that's uh, one opportunity gone. He was looking for the perfect 10 in the, in the uh, Tickford 500 and then the perfect 10 at Bathurst. Well, there's one one of those options gone, unfortunately. His career record will always read nine wins in the Tickford 500, which is not too shabby anyway. It's funny, people, there's so much expectation for Brock to do this, and yet you talk to the man himself, he says, well, it's more important to other people than me because I reckon I've had a pretty good run. Let's go to John Smiles. It is a funny old sport, isn't it? At the top end of the field, you've got people like Brock doing what they do, and at the other end of the field, well, all Almost the other end of the field. You got Greg Creek, who's been out there battling hard all day, but every lap has been Greg. Uh, well, it wasn't quite that bad. I don't think I've ever made so many mistakes. We had uh, mud all over the windscreen. I was just driving blind, but uh, we made some good progress. Terry did a terrific job in the first stint, and uh, then he had to spin towards the end and we ended up in the bunker. And uh, at the end of that one, when I was just driving blind, it just got so hard that I couldn't see where I was going. I wasn't going to turn the wipers on because of the mud on the screen. But having said that, we're at one stage with the fourth quickest car on the track. so the the car's certainly going very well, and the Dunlop tyres were holding up well. Well, it's not the fastest car on the track at the moment. Really. No, all, all we've got is a broken extractor, and uh, we, we simply weren't game to keep running in case it caused an, uh, an engine bay fire.